Welcome to Indie Resources, fifth video on Node.js and WebSockets, and the tenth video on building a web game with HTML5, JavaScript, and Impact. Um, kind of left off just showing you what I've got so far, and I didn't really do a great explanation of explaining the code because we didn't have time, so I'm going to explain it now. Um, we're going to start with our app. Um, one of the, a couple and and some of the things I've I've added in here we'll go over here shortly. But um, some of the things to to kind of the new things that I went over. If we look at our player where, where we go into our actual attack and our movement and everything. And I told you before I took this off the forums, um, but I just kind of added my a couple of my own little things in there. The, the the really the only thing that's important here, the only thing that's new. And I, and I tell you what, before we do that, let's just go through this code. Um, I kind of showed before. This is just the the actual mouse angle. <coughs> When you press, um, press the what we're going to call attack button, um, and we're not pressing any other button, it's actually going to move the character, and all it's doing is is creating a destination for your X and your Y, which is your, and it's just grabbing the input of the mouse, um, and then what it's doing is it's it's going to it's storing those into this into this variable but it's also going to go ahead and send to the server with the socket.emit move player and it's going to send the destination and then the player's name so if we go into our app and we go to actually move player you'll see it's igniting this function it's giving it the the variables and then it's going to broadcast socket.broadcast.emit which means it's sending it to everybody but ourselves player move destination x destination y game name so if we go to our index and we go to player move you can see it's pulling them back in what it's doing is it's gra it's creating a um, array of all the players that are current that currently exist um, if there are players that other exist in other words if we're not playing by ourselves then it's going to loop through all the players and if the game name that was sent equals the other players game name um, just the, just the property out of that class then it's going to go ahead and set that destination and that and then the, what's going to happen there with that is we will shoot down here to our other player and it's going to ignite just like the actual regular player does to where inside of this update function as soon as the destination does not equal this number then it's going to do something well that's what it's doing it's now saying okay well this player's destination equals whatever that new destination is let's go ahead and we're going to do uh, basically create a variable this distance to target that's that's basically saying this destination um, the x and the y minus and this is to, this is just to align the graphics out properly to to make the character kind of fall into into place um, so it, it's it's minusing that out but what it's doing is it's it's creating setting that destination and this the rest of this stuff is basically just um, just moving the player and pointing them in the right direction and you can kind of look through that yourself I'm not going to go through a huge explanation of how it works because it's it's kind of easy basically it's just taking the movement speed and and taking the the current velocity and, and setting it to the target so it moves there but all we're doing is, is we're just sending the what happens between the net player and the actual regular player is the same because all it's doing is setting that destination and we're just sending that single destination so the only thing that's being sent is every time one of the players clicks to move that's all it's sending is the game name and the destination and then the client handles the rest um, the point behind kind of letting the client handle it all is that even if a, even if and, and this is just for the player even if somebody wanted to cheat and they wanted to move another player it's not actually going to to move them for anybody else it's not going to help them any it's just going to move them on their screen so it's not really going to do a whole lot because like I said we're going to make all of the actual um, attack and things like that everything that happens comes only directly from the player everything else is just a clone that's just mimicking it and it, it doesn't matter if you move it or not um, so let's see basically then we just have an else statement saying that we're idling and it's going to move everything that once in other words so once it gets back to the once it gets to that target then we're going to um, we're going to set the velocity to zero. We're going to set the destination back so it doesn't move. And then we want an idle state, so it doesn't so it doesn't point the same direction. It doesn't look like he's just like halfway running. It puts him back to idle. Um, and that's that's basically how that that sim simple movement works. Um, I, I kept the initialized player, I believe, the same. Um, the only thing that we're going to have to we will have to kind of change a couple things with initialized player to make sure that it. Um, pulls all the positions right when new players join and everything like that. 
Um, now if we go to attack, so here's our attack. If input press attack and the whatever, this one's going to be the minor bullet. Um, if it's fired, which I haven't created the other two bullets, then we're just going to emit spawn a bullet. Um, the bullet type is one. In other words, it's the minor bullet. Um, the game name and then the mouse angle. Where is the mouse at? Um, then we're actually going to spawn the real bullet and we're going to go ahead and run through our bullet down here. So it's going to create the bullet. Um, nothing new about that. The size, the offset, all that good stuff. The bullet type, I went ahead and created a new property, bullet type, and just I set it to default to one so for some reason it doesn't, uh, so nothing's passed. It's, it's just the basic bullet. And then um, this actually doesn't really, I can just set that to um, 0, 1, and 2 because I think I have three frames on it. And all it's going to do is it's going to, um, it's basically taking the mouse angle, um, setting it, setting a speed for it, and shooting it out. And this is just saying, this handle movement trace is just saying if it leaves the screen, then go ahead and kill it because there's no point in to keep letting it go. Um, so if we go back to our app and we do the, and I have a couple things in here that you see that I'll pull out of the source. It's just from stuff I was testing around and playing around with. Um, so here's our spawn bullet. It called, it went after, before it actually spawned the bullet, it told the server, hey, this person just spawned a bullet. And so if we go to the server, the server's going to say, okay, bullet was spawned. It came, it's this type of weapon type. It came from this, this game player, and it's at this angle. So it's going to do a broadcast to everybody else, except for ourselves, saying spawn client bullet, the weapon type, the game name, and the angle. And as you can see, this is just kind of stuff copied over and over again. We're just creating something. I'm using basically the same functions, the same everything, and we're, all we're doing is just passing this data over and over again, depending on what it is. So if we go to index, and that we will build on this and make this a little more complicated later. I just want to get the basics out of the way and get, get kind of a framework down there. So if we spawn a bullet, um, let's find our spawn here. It is spawn client bullet. We're going to... First, we're going to grab all the players, just like before. We're going to run through them. If the, if the game name equals the game name we sent, then we're going to spawn net bullet. We're going to put it at the players, that player's position X. I, I did plus 30 plus 30 because it kind of that's where it kind of falls out right. And I may need to go back and tweak that a little bit, but for now it looks all right. And then, of course, the bullet type and then the angle. And then if we go down here, and the, the one thing we do need to add with the angle is making the player face that direction. I haven't got that in yet, so that's something we're going to add. So if we go to our player and we do the actual net bullet, <coughs> um, it's just a basic bullet. Um, everything's about the same except for it's just going to do a simple create it here. That's all this all this net bullet is do. It's just for visual purposes for everybody to see all of the actual uh, physics or anything like that is all going to be done from the original bullet and I know that's one question I've been getting a lot of is well how are you going to stop cheating well that's that's kind of how it's going to work and I'll have to actually show it it's it's we're not going to need to actually run the physics and everything on the server because we're going to make it to where everything else is just a clone of the original and the original is the only one that's going to matter if they're going to um if they're going to cheat, they could cheat regardless if it's done on the server, if that's the case. I guess it's kind of hard to explain what I'm trying to talk about, so I'm just going to show it here later. But um, anyway, and I went ahead and changed this animation because of my bullet is more of a, a three three pace thing. So let's, let me look to see what that changed. Let's go to our server, open it up. Let's go to our clients. We're going to refresh, refresh, which you don't really, we don't really need two, but... Um, it's going so fast you can't even see it, which my graphics aren't that great anyway. But um, And the one thing I want to do is if you shoot down here, I want the guy to face down there. That's one thing we're going to add in the next couple videos. Um, the, one thing I, the one thing I haven't really tested on video is creating more than um, having a couple more clients join. Making sure the bullets all spawn correctly and that there's not like a million bullets flying around. Let's walk this guy kind of over here where he can see, and we'll walk this guy over here. I did see something funny over there. Maybe not. Maybe it's just the way he was walking. Um, let's go to this middle board. So you can kind of see there's only one bullet going on right there. I just want to make sure there was it would work with a couple clients. 
I tell you what, let's let's do this. Let's scrunch some of these up. And you can see we haven't for what we've done. There's really not a whole lot going on. I, I did I didn't um, go ahead and blank out the the creature spawning again. But as you can see, whenever something's whenever we're moving, it's just that one send. And then when we're sending data, it's kind of the same way. It's just one chunk of data for every time. And the smaller we can make this, the better. And we're going to work on that later. Uh, let's get this one small. Let's get this one small. And let's pop open another one. And we got another player joining. Let's put him about right there. Let's see how we're looking. Yeah, so it's still looking good. Which it doesn't matter how many players we have after this. I mean, this is all... I was just kind of checking for a little bit of lag and seeing how it looks. But making sure nobody else is firing any other bullets or anything crazy like that. Now, we got two players moving right here for some reason. And I'm not sure... I don't know if I seen that correctly. Well, I guess he was already moving is what it was. So anyway, that's just a quick quick look through on it. Um, so to be honest with you, I didn't make a whole terribly lot of changes. I mean, there was just mainly the movement changes and the, and the way the server feeds it. A lot of what we're going to do after this is going to be actual bullet collisions, creatures that, we can, that will attack us and that we can kill, and that's going to be on the next videos. But I did want to get everybody caught up to speed real quick on the current code that I have. As far as our main, I didn't change a whole lot other than just taking out all those other keys and, and putting binding in new keys in here. Um, I don't believe I made really any other changes that we haven't already been through. Um, with the index now to go ahead and show you what I did with the creatures, which is almost you know pretty much almost the same thing we were doing before. Um, and you'll notice I named the creatures these axolix. Uh, the reason why is they, they, that's part of one of my other games. That's the name of them for Forsaken Sanctum, and I just kept the name and just drug them over here. But um, when a creature respond, here's where here's where we're responding our creatures. And I know a lot of people are going to get upset about this, but there are other ways of doing this. Um, and we are going to change this, by the way. We're going to make this more random and, and things like that. But the server is actually, all we're doing is we're doing an interval. And I'll go ahead and comment these out real quick. Um, the first the first interval is every six seconds. It's going to spawn a creature every six seconds. Now, we're going to randomize that later to where we're not, we're just doing math out random and to where it'll it'll randomly spawn them at different places, different times, stuff like that. But I, first, we get, like I said, just getting the basics and the framework there. And then it's gonna it's gonna activate the creature, or what we what I call activate the creature, move the creature every three seconds. And once again, that's gonna be randomized and changed. And um, down here in the server is the actual codes for spawning it. It just um, I put the if the creature count is less than ten, so we, nine creatures is the max. But of course, we can change that. Then um, it's going to uh, then it's going to spawn a random. It's going to spawn a creature and give them a random name for for purposes of being able to track them. Um, I did create a new class for the creature up here, a, a basic class, I guess you'd call it. Um, here he is here, and that way that way we can spawn an instance of the creature and not have to actually uh, try attempt to assign some new variables or do some random variable or anything like that. We're just spawning an, a new version, a new instance of this class, and we're we're setting up its health. Currently, uh, the, this this dot target is to target a player, so that way, every client it, that that it's on, it doesn't. So, in other words, what I want to be able to do is, is I want to have this this creature walking around, and when it detects a when it detects another player, it the, and targets that player, it's going to send a message to everybody saying, okay, this creature's target is this guy. Now, ran and I, what I was thinking is, is just kind of randomly set it up to where it's pretty much going to target this guy, but maybe it won't. Maybe if after it takes so much damage, it leaves, or it just decides to quit attacking, or the, the player gets so far away, then we can set the target back to zero and have it look for other targets again. So it's going to be kind of a, a randomized thing if it targets you or not, kind of an aggro type thing. Um, Anyway, there's no velocity, and then of course it's position. That's the other thing that we need to do n next is when a new player joins, it needs to know the position. Because right now all I have is setting the velocity to make this creature move, but there's no real position X and position Y that's being set in here, which we need to do. That way when a new player joins, it knows where all the creatures are at instantly. And then of course this dot name. So I've just made a new little new little small class that it's going to start accepting these things and that's what it's doing here is that it creates this new um, creates this new class it, it names it um, the creature count of course I make plus ones because we don't want to go over 10 
and then it just adds the name and adds now I made a, an array called creature list and we just want to push that name in there so we know that that name exists and we can continue to build upon in other words it's just like the player list it just captures all the creatures that are in there and then the iosockets.emit which I've explained before means it sends it out to everybody so it's telling everybody spawn this creature at this location and here's its name and then we have iosockets.sockets client ids.emit resync creatures now what this does is this I'm going to explain this in a minute. This isn't. This probably isn't the way I'm going to do this in the end. But what I was testing, something that I wanted to test was I wanted to. I want to make the the, the data transfer as as minimal as possible. And right now I have it set on the the very first client that's in the game. But I was thinking about randomizing it to where instead of having to send back and forth the player's actual positional data, being able to when a new creature spawned it will go into a random client, a random person in the game, and grab the grab the creature's positions and store them in an array so when a new player joins that array is already there and it only happens when a new creature has a new creature is spawned now there is a couple issues there with perfectly resyncing it that is one of the most minimal ways to 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 do data as far as you you you're barely sending anything all you're doing is sending in a couple numbers of uh, every now and then instead of constantly sending data while while that's the good side of it, there's a lot of bad sides to this that I, I really don't like, so I'm actually thinking about changing that over to where it's not going to work that way. I, I haven't decided yet. I'm kind of testing it to see what's best. I haven't got that far yet. But that's what this is. I, and, and to give you an explanation in case you guys ever need to use this, what it's doing is it's taking, the, it's taking all the sockets and then the client ID um, zero. I want the very first guy, the very first. And if you actually look when we spawn a player, this is something I added. Um... I made client IDs and I pushed okay whenever your socket whenever you join you have an ID every socket has its own ID I'm all I did was create an array that stores these IDs in here and that's something I added to initialize player and then what it's doing is it's taking that very first client ID and it's only emitting to them and what it does is it resyncs creatures so it's asking that client hey where where are your creatures located I need to know and then it's sending back that data and I'm going to randomize it later to, to keep people from being able to cheat but it's got as good and as bad I don't necessarily like it a whole lot I like it because it's almost no data being sent and it's gonna allow you to have that many more players but I think there is better ways to do it but anyway that's what that's about for when you see that um, the other function we have running every three seconds is a creature active activate creature whatever um, it's just running through the creature list and it's just doing a random times eight if it's less than four then there the creatures just gonna stand there um, if it's otherwise if it's less than five so pretty much means if it's four it's going to move right and it's just saying the velocity it's just setting the velocity and doing the right sending the animation equals right which technically we can actually um, we can actually remove this and we're going to later because I'm gonna have all the clients actually handle this instead but all this is doing is going through it and saying okay are they moving up down left or right and then it, else if nothing else then it's just going to sit idle and that's all it's doing and, and like I said this is a basic framework this is not the finished product this is just getting the framework down and we'll go in and randomize all this stuff and make everything change but now that we've built this this framework now we can start adding some cool stuff start really making this thing look like a game and, and, and actually having players get to fight the same creature and that's what will go on from here